In the heart of New Jersey lies Greyston Asylum, a decaying monument to the past. Its dark history includes a legendary folk singer, Woody Guthrie, who was committed there. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Outer Realm, where we delve deep into the eerie and enigmatic tales that defy the boundaries of the unknown. Tonight, we transport you to the decaying halls of one of New Jersey's most notorious asylums, Greystone. But be warned, this story is not for the faint of heart. One of the buildings at the historic Greystone Park Psychiatric Hospital in North Jersey could soon be torn down. To tear down a building like Greystone, an old Kirkbride like that, that's a tragedy. The complex's deterioration stood as a glaring example of the consequences of failed leadership and governmental neglect. State officials recently announced plans to demolish the main building. This facility has been, unfortunately, an eyesore um, in this area, the way it's been maintained and treated over time. Several groups have already expressed interest in redeveloping the hospital campus that has been closed since 2008. Demolition work could start by February or March of next year. One of the more infamous asylums in New Jersey lore is Greystone, located in Morris Plains, Parsippany. First conceived in 1871 and known as the New Jersey State Lunatic Asylum at Morristown, the institution first opened its doors to a mere 292 patients on August 17, 1876. In its day, Greystone was a landmark in progressivism. Designed by Thomas Kirkbride, the hospital advocated uncrowded conditions, fresh air, and the notion that mental patients were curable people. Over time, the humane reputation of Greystone was tarnished. As overcrowding became the norm, the hospital, which was originally meant to house hundreds, once contained 7,674 patients in 1953. Overcrowding was a problem almost immediately in the hospital's history. In 1881, the attic was converted into patient living space, and in 1887, the hospital's exercise rooms were converted into more dormitories. Overcrowded and understaffed allowed for escapes, injuries, and the spreading of illnesses. Many patients died in the hospital from an outbreak of typhoid fever in 1895. This was just the start of the asylum's decline, as it is also rumored to have participated in unspeakable experiments on its patients. The underground tunnels connected various buildings and were used to transport patients. Many witnesses feel as though they're being watched while there, never able to get out fast enough. It is said that it is home to hundreds of souls who either passed away as a patient or due to the actions of a patient and many visitors have claimed to hear screams echo faintly down the hallways of the underground tunnels. There have been multiple reports of a young girl holding a teddy bear and wearing a pink dress, quietly watching visitors and trespassers who dare to enter the halls of the building. Many of the buildings at Greystone went abandoned long ago. The hospital was recently ordered closed altogether due to unspeakable abuses and multiple patient suicides. Though historical societies have expressed a desire to preserve the older buildings of Greystone, the fate of the grand old asylum is still up in the air at the time of this writing. One of the hospital's more famous patients was none other than the legendary folk singer and songwriter, Woody Guthrie. Woody Guthrie, the iconic troubadour, was committed to Greystone on May 29, 1956, after he was arrested for wandering aimlessly on the highways. Little did he know that his stay at Greystone would be far from ordinary. Well, he was uh, just a typical patient. He wasn't, um, quote unquote, Woody Guthrie at the time. One day he was found uh, hitchhiking in New Jersey and he was picked up for vacancy by the police and said that he was drunk, etc. And they called and he said, he's not drunk, he's sick and they took him to Greystone Hospital for observation. And that's how he landed there in the first place and then ended up spending many, many years there. He was in a big ward with about, I don't know, 30 other patients. And he was at the end of the ward, so we had to walk through this whole psychiatric ward to get to, get to him. And it was really scary and I didn't like it. It was just horrible. People jumping around and or making strange sounds. A very scary place, actually. Woody was suffering from Huntington's disease, a hereditary degenerative nervous disorder which would eventually prove terminal. During his stay there, Woody referred to Greystone as Gravestone. This sardonically humorous nickname might prove more prophetic than Woody ever could have imagined. 
as Greystone might well be the last monument to a dying breed of New Jersey's gargantuan mental institutions. Enter Philip Bueller, an artist consumed by the enigma of Greystone and Guthrie's forgotten legacy. His journey began with a fascination for ruins, a quest to unearth lost fragments of history. Philip's odyssey into the past started in his youth, with daring explorations of abandoned Ellis Island. His passion for capturing the essence of forgotten places led him to the haunting halls of Greystone. Within Greystone's forsaken wards, Philip and his companion Bill Grafe stumbled upon the chilling remnants of lives once lived. Patient mugshots, devoid of names, only bearing case numbers, painted a grim picture of transformation under Greystone's care. It was during these explorations that Bueller uncovered the link to Woody Guthrie. This revelation propelled him deeper into the archives, unearthing letters, photographs, and home movies that shed light on life within these walls. Philip's findings breathes life into the memories of Greystone and Guthrie, challenging us to remember the forgotten. Ladies and gentlemen, as we conclude our journey through the shadows of Greystone Asylum, remember that history is not always what it seems. The echoes of the past, the mysteries of the unknown, they linger in the crumbling walls of these forsaken places. Philip Bueller's courage in uncovering the forgotten stories and the memory of Woody Guthrie's time at Gravestone remind us that even in the darkest of places there is a spark of humanity. As we bid farewell to this chilling chapter, may we continue to seek the truth, to unravel the mysteries that lie hidden in the shadows, and to remember the souls who once walked these haunted halls. Thank you for joining us on this journey through the Outer Realm. Until next time, stay curious, stay brave, and never stop exploring the unknown.